economic injury disaster loan. Uh, I couldn't find much information on what to do if you're a landlord. So uh, here's what I did, right? So I'm a, I'm a landlord. I have several properties and I have a Airbnb business. So this is what I did. Um, couldn't find much information. So I did my research and this is what I got. So I want to share it out to you guys. Uh, those of you guys that might be in my situation. Uh, so you at least have something to go by. And this is what I did. Just a disclaimer. I'm not a professional. Uh, but I was able to gather some resources. And you can see here from my CPA and just from researching from other YouTube. Um, this is what I got. All right, guys. So uh, don't hold me accountable to it. And call me out if uh, something's changed. Because uh, this, this stuff is changing uh, daily. All right, so um, let me go ahead and start pulling my notes up here. Uh, I know that this started back the the SBA loans, which is which incorporates that EIDL program, uh, which is uh, the EIDL. Let's just call it EIDL, which stands for Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, uh, let's just get this straightened out. Uh, after doing a few research, and uh, today is March. Today is February. Is April twenty first already? Right, two o'clock in the morning. Um, if you're a landlord, the P the PPP program is not for you, from what I gather. All right. So you, if you're a landlord, you're gonna have to use the the EIDL on that. All right. So um, it took me a while because um, I think it started the EIDL as part of the SBA uh, uh, program, right? The small business uh, SBA, SBA, what do they call it? SBA. So small business administration. And I'll show you what I did. On how, on how I did my application process as well. So um, I started, I mean, my, my my father passed away in the middle of all this situation, right? All this shutdown and stuff like that in March. So I, so I think they activated that application process for SBA back in March, but I didn't apply it until, and you, you see my timeline, I'll, I'll draw you guys the timeline or I'll show you the timeline. Uh, when I started applying. So, um, yeah, I was just, my dad passed away. My business went to crap. My Airbnb business went to crap. Uh, I had a few rentals, so I was going to, you know, we still had time on them because people were occupying my rentals. But my Airbnb business just went to crap because everybody started canceling on me. So I just went ahead and kind of crawled into a hole, right? Dad passed away. Business went to crap. I just didn't do anything, right? So then when I finally crawled out, I said, hey, I need to start doing stuff. Um, it was back in April, right? I think April 3rd. We'll pull up the email here, do some screenshots for you guys. So here we go. You know, and and that, at this current situation, you know, I just want you guys to know that they have already ran out of money for these type of programs, right? And they're working on, adding more money into these programs. So so the reason why I'm doing this video is that if you haven't done it yet, here's your chance. Here's your, you have another chance of doing this and getting in line um, so you can prep for it. Because right now, if you go onto their website, the SBA website to apply for these loans, they pretty much said, you know, they're not accepting any applications at this point. So for you guys to, uh, at this point, just get yourself ready for the next wave because because I got uh, one or two people messaging me on how to do this. So I want to go ahead and go ahead and walk you guys what I want, what I did. So you can kind of when it opens back up, when they start funding this particular loan again, you guys can go ahead and uh, just be prepared ready. So you can do it fast and hopefully get yourself back in line um, in front of the line before everybody else who missed the boat. 
All right, so uh, let's do this. Uh, so I started out, here's my timeline. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Let me go ahead and take this banner off and share my screen here. Show that screen. Let me go ahead and do this. Close out my screen here. So when I finally came through, I, um, you know, got out of my depressed mode. I went ahead and emailed my, uh, my, my CPA. And as you notice, uh, I went ahead and explained to my situation, you know, I have five short-term rentals, five Airbnbs, and I have multiple LLCs in them and, and stuff like that. And I just wanted to ask him, like, should I be applying twice uh, as because some of my rentals are under my name and some of the rentals are in LLC. And basically, this was back in April 2nd, right? And uh, she pretty much was. Um, so, for my, for one of my first questions is you know, uh, it's an Airbnb, that's a different type of business from a, just a regular rental so from her summarizing it is pretty much based on trade right it, it, it trade or business so it's kind of like same business so she's kind of saying you lump that into one particular um, business so um, and then she went on pretty much um, and that pretty much here said she said the IRS pretty much not clear, you know, about multiple LLCs. So, uh, but to try it anyways, right? It doesn't it doesn't hurt. So, I went ahead and applied uh, for the application for the the EIDL loan, uh, one under my name, and then one under my LLC name. And then I have multiple LLCs, but I just did two because I didn't know if I did multiple ones that might put a, a uh, and it might be an issue because part of the application, it um, it, uh, it asks you for your social security number. So if you put two applications out and it's, and it's also asking for your social security number, you have two applications out on it. So I didn't know if that was going to slow it down somehow. So... I went, you know, so that's kind of what I did. You know, I just went ahead and did two. Um, and she pretty much say that uh, when you do apply, mark, mark it as a sole proprietorship. Okay. So this was back in uh, April 2nd. That was an email. I emailed to her uh, that morning, got a response back, but I didn't really reply, apply until that night. So let me see what the second email was about here. Um, so, so yeah, this was back in April 7th. So I, I went, I had a gum, I, I went ahead and applied anyways. So this is, let's go through the process, um, of the application process. So I did some screenshots here. So this is when you go and this, the links, I don't want to do the links cause the links changes every time uh, that I gone there. Not every time, but like. It has changed like three times on me already. So I, that's why I'm doing screenshots and just show you what it looks like so you can kind of be prepared. So when you when you, when you you go ahead and apply, this is what it looks like, right? You only have like one, two, three, four, five, five steps, right? And I, I think they say it's going to take about two hours and 10 minutes to, to apply for it, but it only took me like, less than 10 minutes to apply for it all right so this is the first page that you'll see when you go ahead and do your your you apply it's going to ask you a bunch of questions and pretty much this is what she's talking about uh, when you apply as a landlord um i'll go ahead and mark it for you guys and uh, apply as a sole proprietorship all right that's kind of what she's saying. So I went ahead and did that. And if you go down, there's pretty much some check boxes that you have to check. Uh, and then on to the next page. All right. So I'm going to save that. 
close out of that. Uh, let's go down to the second page. So the second page is going to ask you for your business name. So business name, you know, you're going to put your business name here. Your trade name is going to be your business name again, which is what I did. And then since I have an LLC, um, I put in the, the EIN of the LLC in here. And then remember, I, I had to do another application, which it just which is just a sole proprietorship. I went ahead and put in my my show sole security number in it. So if if you didn't if you don't have an LLC, uh, just go ahead and put in your your so 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 show security number. Okay, mark this as sole proprietorship, and then you just do. The rest of these like is this application for nonprofit? It's pretty much gonna be no. Is, is this application franchise? Gonna did no. And what's gonna take you the longest out of this whole application is pretty much this part right here. This part right here. Uh trying to figure out what your gross revenue is. It would be easy if you um if you you know if you already did your taxes, you kind of figure that out for 2019. Um it's because it says prior to the date of the disaster right so you can kind of calculate that you know um 12 past 12 prior 12 months so if you did your taxes you can kind of get that number if you didn't do it i did it out of my 2018 taxes so that's what i did <clears throat> and then the next number um is cost of goods sold but the problem is i didn't have any goods but i was when i was doing my research people were just figuring out that it's, it's their expense so i didn't i couldn't figure out if that was it because there was the section down here is also the same it says rent to properties uh lost rent right uh loss here let me see if i can clear this out it says loss laws rent due to disaster so uh so what i did is i did two things for my llc i put in my all my expense like my mortgage and stuff um in here mortgage expense stuff like that in this section here and then my income my revenue my gross up here and that's what i did and then my uh the properties that are under my name i went ahead and did it did this part here as far as how much gross i made in 2018 left this as zero right and then put in my loss rent right what i could have made for my airbnb um because like some most of my airbnbs are under my name in here um that's what i did so i don't know because there's not really detailed information about this so that's what I did, and uh, you'll see from the email later. So let's go on to the third page. The third page is pretty much, you know, who's the owner, right? So you can just put in your info, you know, uh, your phone number, you know, how, how much owner ownership percentage you have. So. Uh, one of them was under me and my wife. So way on the bottom of this application here, uh, it has a it has a button that you can add. So if you and your wife, if you own fifty percent of it and your wife own, owns fifty percent of it, click on that add button there so you can add your wife in there, right? And then it's going to ask you like this is what I was talking about like right here your social. <coughs> it's going to add your your social so so security number in it and your birthday so this this is consistent throughout the entire application so uh this is the information that you add in your 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 address is in here as well so it's gonna i'm thinking that it's gonna correlate somehow down the road so you can't double dip you know if if that's the case if it's all under one industry and you're trying to apply for this loan and you have an llc that's you know that that we already addressed earlier in your ein uh the other page where it asks you for ein but in this page here is also asking for your your, your social 
to carry. So uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe they can correlate that somehow in the database and say, okay, yeah, this guy can't. Don't let this guy double dip for it alone. I don't know. We'll see. So this is the this is the third page, and then you get that done. Let's go ahead and go to the fourth page. Uh, the fourth page is going to ask you a few questions up here. You're going to answer those questions. Uh, right here is going to ask you if anybody helped you completed this. Um, put it then put in their information in here and how much they charge you for it, right? Don't put my information in there, all right? Um, and then this is the big part right here, right? So uh, I don't know what's going to happen with the new... Um, the new bill that they're going to pass if they're going to give people an advance of ten thousand um this is the reason why they were pushing everybody that to apply because you get free money and free grant money um and before they were saying you know uh you get automatically within three days um but you know i didn't see anything but then again i apply kind of late so um, make sure you check this because if you do see this, on um, if you go back, if they do open up the application, you do see this, this is free money, guys, okay? Free money. So make sure you check this, all right, for an advancement up to 10000 all right? And we'll go deeper a little bit about what, what, um, what all entails later, all right? So this is the page four. And I think we'll two more pages left. Okay, so this is in, the next page is going to just ask you to verify your information. Uh, I took them all out. This is all the information is going to show up. It's just is kind of like a confirmation page, and that's it. Um, let me close out of here, and then the last page is going to be your your real confirmation. You want to make sure you get an application number right here. So when I applied um on the 2nd of april um this was the number that i was given like it was like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten digits into it so uh, make sure you get this make sure you take a picture of it because there's no confirmation number or no confirmation email that they're getting that they're sending to you once i got here uh i just took a picture i actually did a recording a screen screen recording of it so this is coming from a screen recording so make sure you take a picture of it because they you you don't get an email saying that this is your application number so or or so you know so take a picture of it record it so you at least have something to fall back on and then uh so i applied for it and then what happened next was I waited and waited and waited and nothing happened, right? So then I went ahead and let's see that second email. <sighs> second email to just to confirm. Waited a few days just to confirm with my CPA that I did it right. I explained to her this is what I did. You know, just to confirm if, you know, it's still, you know, all under one type of business. And she's kind of saying, yeah, uh, they only approve uh, EIDL loan as entities are owned by you guys. So it's, you know, ultimately she's kind of saying that um, even if they're in LLC or they're under your name, you still own them all. So uh, she's thinking that, you know, it's going to be one loan. You're going to be able to just get one loan out of this. So, uh, and, you know, and one of my other questions was, you know, do, am I doing this correctly? Should I be doing the, the PPP as well? I mean, does that qualify toward me? Because part of the PPP, the biggest question people were going through is, you know, what if I'm just a landlord and I pay myself? Does that count? Well, yes and no, but 
uh, I think she ultimate said it right here uh, that PPP loan amount is based on uh, okay so IRS clarified last week that PPP the PPP loan amount is based on payroll and the 1099 contractor payments are not part of the definition of payroll so I think part of confusion was in that bill that they passed that um, that they mentioned in there that saying that 1099 is a employee but now they went ahead and come back came back and said okay 1099 contractors are not part of the part of an employee um, term so that's reason why I don't qualify in applying for uh, PPP loan okay so that was back in April 7th so we waited and waited so I did more research let's see here and then this is what I gather just to confirm that I did do it correctly um, that right here this is a PowerPoint slide from like a YouTube video that I saw that um, the SBA from an SBA slide uh, PowerPoint slide that they were showing that owners of rental property right uh, can apply for the economic injury disaster loan right here okay so that was a confirmation that I saw so that was also another confirmation so there you guys go so if you're a landlord you do Airbnb business um, rental property uh, the economic injury disaster loan is what you should be using to apply not the PPP and uh, see here Let me pull my notes here see what else I got here so another another thing that was going um, is going around is if you get that ten thousand if you get that ten thousand uh, grant money uh, it's based on the amount of employees right so what happened was I got an email um, let's see what I have it here so this is the email uh, and April 14th so let's see here one two after applying for it on April the 2nd after one week almost two weeks later you get a can email right get a can email saying that you know this is you know that this is only used for to get that advance of the ten thousand right here. The advance will. The key thing here is you know that the advance will provide one thousand per employee up to a maximum of ten thousand. So they went ahead before before they were saying that they're just going to give you ten thousand uh, from the bill. The bill is saying that you know without any sort of verifying. But then they went ahead and I guess pulled that back and said, okay, it's only based on another employee. So um part of the question, I still I'm still um not sure yet is that if I if you have like if you have an Airbnb business or you have a landlord, or, you know, you have a your landlord and you hire people to come in clean so i hire people to come and clean my airbnb rentals um i hire people to come and and clean my pool um and i hire people to paint right they're all 1099 right they're all 1099 employees that was one of the question is can are you considering them as employees now the bill says it is um but you know that was that language has changed a little bit for the PPP, right? But we're still not sure about the the EIDL, ED in economic. Ah, 
forget what it was the EIDL loan. So uh, that's one thing that I need to clarify. If you guys, if you guys, you know, just to let you guys know, I'm reaching out to my CPA just to confirm that tomorrow. So if you're if you want to know too, message me, um, and I'll clarify that tomorrow. So that's one thing that still has that I'm still scratching my head on. Uh, if if so, what I did now on my application is I included them, right? So you what you do is you include the number of employees, and what I'm talking about is I think is this particular slide. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on this. I think it's on this particular page, and it's and it asks you how many employees you have. So make sure you include you yourself, uh, and for my LLC. So for my LLC, it's going to be like me, my wife. Uh, I have two cleaning person and then i have like a pool guy right that comes and clean my pool uh that's so that's five people so if what they're saying is correct uh from that email where's that email that one thousand that means i can if it if it if it works I'll get five thousand. Now the other disclaimer on that is they were only giving like the first one million applicants. That was the one of the disclaimers. So you know, I think that already ran out. But if they went ahead and fund it again for the second round, um, then hopefully we might get it. We don't know, but. If that's the case, if you do get it, you know, you know that would be like five thousand because that's five employees. So we'll see. If you're not, that's okay because you know I'm shooting for this loan as well because I need some funds to pay off my bills, right? So uh, I think the terms on that was the term for the loan was thirty years, less than four percent on the loan. Uh, I gotta go back and check. You know, don't quote me on it. We gotta go back and check because things changes all the time. Um, and that is it. Um, that's what I have so far that I've done. So we now we know that the money has run dry. So as of today, as of yesterday, four twenty, uh, the Senate has not passed anything on funding the SBA more money to give us these loans. So now we're in limbo. And if you're trying to apply for this, uh, there's you can't apply because they took that down because there's no money. They took all, they're not taking the application applicants. Um, but uh, to get a status, so one other thing was to get a status so uh people were getting status so you know it, some people took like a couple weeks to get a status so they were saying that there you know if if you pull a credit check and you get an inquiry on your credit then that means that in a couple days you you're going to get your stuff so that's one way of getting a status update so um and i was like what kind of inquiry are they doing so i was looking on credit karma i don't see anything on there so then as i started digging they were doing like most people were were looking at experian experion so um i did that went on experion's website you know i think it's what is it is it let's see make sure i got the right site yeah, yeah experion yeah Oh, it's media. Yep. Just go to experience website and you can kind of, uh, it's free. You can create an account, start for free. Then they don't ask you for a credit card or anything like that. And I went ahead and looked in there, create an account, you know, 
pulled my credit, saw my credit score, um, did that in like a few minutes, you know, five minutes. And uh, you can see the inquiries, and there was no inquiries for, you know, from the government. All I saw was an inquiry back last year. So that meant that they haven't even touched my application yet. So if that's the case, I'm still in limbo. We're still waiting on that money, you know, that they're going to pass. Hopefully they pass to fund it so we can get something. All right. A um, couple of little nuggets uh, that I missed out on is that make sure you're checking the state, your state, to see if they're providing any sort, any sort of relief for your business um, in the county. Uh, when I was looking on the state of Florida, I didn't see anything for the state, but when I was looking at the county, I saw that the county was offering some sort of relief for small businesses, like a grant. So that's kind of, I mean, usually when they say grant, that's kind of like free money. But when I went ahead and tried to apply for it, uh, it says they closed it down due to technical difficulties or technical stuff. So I'm guessing that funding's over. Uh, there's no more money in that. So uh, that's a couple of tips. So if you haven't done it, uh, check your, your county to see if they're offering anything. Um, that's it. Uh, check back with me. Uh, see if you have any. If you have any questions, love to help you guys. You know, I'm just trying to show you what I I do uh, because I didn't see any any of this information. Couldn't couldn't. I, this is all this information is just for me grabbing here and there, and um, hope it helps. Uh, love to help you guys. Want to see you guys succeed. Let me know if you need help. All right. Until then, keep hustling. And uh, if I upload this, I'm going to upload this to YouTube. If you, if you like it, please hit like and uh, subscribe to my channel. All right, guys.